What's up guys, welcome back to the shop. Like I said at the end of the last video, I wanna shift gears. We're gonna come back to finishing the, the exterior of the tent at the very end of the series. Uh, but I want to shift into some of the other things that we need to get done. We need to install the hinge, we need to figure out what gas struts that we're going to need, and then we got to do all the fabric work. So what I wanted to do today is a shorter video dedicated to the gas struts. I just didn't want this information to get lost somewhere in a longer video. So what we'll do is we'll get the hinge mounted and then I'll explain what size and strength gas strut that you're going to need for your particular build. So let's get to work. We're going to start by installing the hinge. I'm using a 48 inch stainless steel piano hinge that I got off Amazon. I'm gonna link everything you need below. Um, you can find a similar product at Lowe's or Home Depot, but it's gonna be like zinc or nickel plated. Um, those will rust eventually. That's why I got this uh, stainless steel version. The other great thing about these is that if you need to shorten it, you can just cut it off and it, and it still works fine. So yeah, first thing we're gonna do is install our hinge. All right, we're at the front of the tent. This is a pretty easy step. We're just gonna get the top out of the way and lay our hinge up here. You just wanna make sure this edge runs along, uh, you know, flush with this edge. Uh, and then make sure it's all centered and straight. I have already have mine marked where I need it to be. I'm using these small half inch number eight screws, Phillips, Phillips head screws to put in. So now we're going to um, put the top back over it. We'll flip the top up and then from the inside we'll attach the hinge to, to the top piece. All right guys, we got the hinge installed, but I thought of something really important that I need to mention because I'm gonna end up doing a modification here. Uh, first thing is that this piano hinge is definitely not the easiest way to go. Um, since you have to open up the tent to install it, it's really hard to install it and everything line up perfectly once it's closed. Um, so this can be really frustrating. The other thing I want to mention is that even with our weather seal that we're going to put here, um, this is still your most vulnerable area for water getting in the tent once it's closed, like on top of your car while you're traveling, because you know you're going to have water coming off the front of the windshield. Uh, you know, not to mention your your forward speed and water is just, it, you know, it can get through this hinge. So. What I'm gonna end up doing is taking like a piece of plywood like this and making a step up in the front, just like we did here. Um, so I'll just do a thin strip. I'll epoxy and fillet this in in place. That way, once our weather seal is here, this will be better protected from water and hopefully it'll just kind of flow out the sides. The second thing I want to mention is that hinges on the exterior would be much easier to install than this. Um, but if you were to go that route, there's, there's two modifications I would make. The first modification I would do is I would do this step up all the way around on all four sides. Instead of stopping like we did, do this step up all the way around. And then right here on the top frame, I would just do one by one, one by two up, up here instead of two like we did. That way the front one by two will sit inside of that step up here. You can weather seal it and it should be good to go. 
so yeah I just wanted to mention that I hope that all makes sense it's not a huge deal not a, not a, not a huge modification but I think it's, it will be important um, remember I've never built this tent before so y'all are kind of seeing me uh, figure this thing out as I go all right we have the hinge mount at the front now let's talk about what gas strut you're gonna need for your build um, I spent a lot of time researching this, uh, wasted money trying buying the wrong thing I had to send back. Um, I really couldn't find a definitive answer online, so I hope this information helps uh, you guys out that are trying to try to figure this out. What we're trying to do is find a gas strut that will be strong enough to lift the top of this tent, hold it in place, but also not. Uh, not too stout where we can't get it back down easily. Um, I found a company called liftsupportdepot.com. That's where I got my, uh, my struts from. I ended up giving them a call and what they said to do was prop up your, your lid and weigh it at its midpoint. So I took a piece of wood and a bathroom scale. I weighed it here in the middle. I got about 20 pounds. And they said to take that weight and double it and you should be in the ballpark. So Mine was about 20 pounds, 40 pounds, and that's for each strut. So, so they were saying a 40 pound strut should work. So, uh, so I ordered two 40 pound struts and two 60 pound struts, just to be just. To, I was kind of skeptical that the 40 pound might not work. Um, so I installed the 40 pound. They did work, but the 60 pound worked a lot better. Um, also knew that when the temperature drops, these get a little weaker. Um, they're not going to fail on you. They just, they're just not quite as strong. So these are going to be stronger in the summertime than they are in the wintertime. So that's why I err on the side of a heavier, heavier weight. Uh, but you don't want to go too, too stout because then it's, it might be hard to get that, uh, get the top back down, um, once it's, once it's up. All right, guys, real quick, super important information about gas struts. Now I went with 32 inch, um, gas struts. Uh, you could probably go a little longer, but I, I definitely wouldn't go shorter than 32 inches. Um, but there's some, there's a couple other measurements you got to keep in mind when you're looking for these things. So, like on Lift Support Depot, you're going to see a few different um, measurements. You're going to have extended length, which is like socket to socket, the full length, and then you'll have your compressed length, how long this thing is when it's compressed, and then how much it compresses is your stroke. Now, what I figured out. To be the best is you want to find a strut that's compressed length is a little over half of the extended length so what I mean by that is this is a 32 inch strut and the compressed length is like 17 or 18 inches so that's a that's a little over half the extended length now you're not going to find one that's exactly half um, but the closer you can get to that half of that extended length the better the reason for that is to get the the top of the tent to lift properly you just need a lot of stroke if you get a you know a lift support that's uh, do, you know doesn't have much stroke the tent's just not going to lift lift very high so make sure that that uh, compressed length is a little over half the uh, extended length hope that helps all right we've closed our lid to figure out where we need to put our um, lift support brackets for our gas struts now I figured out on my tent that uh, center part point on the on the lid works really well for me. This is where that bulkhead is, and it's a good place to mount. Now I need to figure out where on the base it's going to mount. Um, so what you want to do is you want to look up what your compressed length is, and if your mounting point, you know this mounting point, you're just going to separate. Um, the next mounting point by that compressed distance. So my compressed length on this is about 16 inches. So I'm just going to mark right about here and then, uh, then attach the strut. If your tent doesn't close all the way, it's not a big deal. Just lift it back up, remount this a little bit further down and then try again. You want it to be completely compressed. Uh, inside of here when, when it's closed. So just kind of fiddle with that this back mounting place until it fits right and then you'll just apply that measurement to the other side and, and it'll be you'll be good to go.
When you go to order your lift support uh, or your gas strut, there's going to be several different uh, mounting connectors to choose from. I really like the uh, ball stud connector and the reason for that is um, it seems to be the most flexible option. If your mounting point's not directly like centered up, it, it still works okay since it's on that ball. Um, one thing you want to keep in mind is that these come in different sizes. I think 10 millimeter and 13 millimeter are the most common sizes, but just make sure your mounting bracket and your connector are the same size. All right, this is the moment of truth. It seems to be holding the weight just fine. Let's see how she lifts. Oh, it works perfect. Oh, I couldn't be happier about that. It's not too too hard to lift. Let's see where the uh, like the breaking point is. Cool. I only have to lift about 16 inches before it starts to hold on its own. Dude. Super excited about that. Guys, I could not be more excited about how those struts are working out on the tent. Uh, I consider this to be a huge win uh, considering how long it took me to figure all that out. Uh, but it wasn't that bad. Um, oh, and on a personal note, uh, in the last video, I wasn't a dad. And in this video, I am a dad. Uh, to a beautiful little girl, her name's Laura Grace, and she's doing awesome. And uh, my wife and I are just loving parenthood. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, that's where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, I know that got kind of long-winded, but I hope all of it was like really helpful information uh, for for those of you that are building tents. Um, in the next video, I have some really cool ripstop material to show you guys. Uh, we'll get that mocked up on the tent and uh, start sewing this thing together. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, share these videos with uh, any of your buddies. Um, and uh, thanks for watching.